Let's be real, cherubs. No one ever tells me, when I get older, I want to live in a nursing home. Nursing homes are consistently voted by my viewers as one of the worst places ever to spend Friday nights, and in general, they bear grim connotations. There is evil there that does not sleep. It is a barren wasteland, riddled with fire and ash and dust. The very air you breathe is a poisonous fume. Why do nursing homes have such bad reputations? To get some context, let's go back to the 1960s. This is when Medicare and Medicaid first came into being. This was a huge <laughs> free government money moment for the medical industry, and this allowed for the rise in popularity of nursing homes. Also remember that back then, medicine was practiced differently. There were no such things as hospitalists, so as a primary care physician, you woke up before the crack of dawn, round on your hospitalized patients, and then you'd go to your office to see outpatients. Then suddenly, you get called that one of your patients showed up in the emergency department and needs to be admitted. So naturally, you drop everything that you're doing and run back to the hospital and admit the patient. Then you come back to your office and see more patients. And then you get a call that one of your inpatients needs to be intubated. So you run back to the hospital and you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until you collapse in bed and answer pages all night, wake up in four hours and repeat the process seven days a week or what's commonly known to the baby boomer generation as work-life balance. PCPs were also responsible for taking care of nursing home patients, but the patients fell into a special kind of limbo. They were supposed to be stable. After all, they're not sick enough to be in the hospital, and they're surrounded by nurses, you know, trained medical professionals, so they should be really safe, right? So physicians would only come by to see them once every two months. Reimbursement was also really poor. You could only be reimbursed for visits to certify that the patients required nursing home care, which again, for a long-term patient, this would be once every 60 days. Anything in between wouldn't be covered, and you'd get a measly 15 bucks per visit. Now, some people will be quick to point out that you can watch A Walk to Remember on YouTube like seven times with 15 bucks, and to that I say, wait, what? Are you serious? <laughs> Class dismissed. So I lay my head back down. There was also a reimbursement disincentive built into the system, such that if you saw more than one nursing home patient on the same day, you'd actually get compensated less because, I mean, I can't even attempt to justify the logic, but basically this is why all the older docs you know are Republicans. You also couldn't bill for your travel time, so if you had a patient at a remote location, uh-oh. See, this is why all of you learned how to dictate while driving in med school. The net result was that there weren't a lot of incentives for physicians to visit their nursing home patients. They weren't even inclined to answer their pages. After all, if it's an emergency, then the staff should just call 911. And if it's not an emergency, then why are you calling me? I'll see the patient in two months. Meanwhile, medical directors of these facilities were frequently retired surgeons or dermatologists, you know, people with no real nursing home experience who were just there to sign papers once a month because free government money. The nurses were basically left to figure out how to practice medicine on their own, and from their perspective, nursing homes were a low-pay, low-prestige kind of job. You'd work there to gain experience that you could use toward applying for a better job. So who cares? So nursing homes gained a reputation as being places where old people would come to be neglected and desiccate in a corner. This changed around the 1990s when the federal government came in and said, this wasn't quality, they couldn't be paying for this. Nowadays, nursing homes are highly regulated. The common factoid that's thrown around is that nursing homes have the most government regulations surrounding their operations second only to nuclear submarines. These days, there's a big push to alter the atmosphere of nursing homes. Back in the day, nursing homes were often renovated hospitals. As such, they're big, they have alarms blaring all the time, they're simply not comfortable places. Modern nursing homes focus much more on making themselves feel like actual homes. You normally don't have a nurse's station in your home, do you? Why should you be fed on hospital trays? You should be exposed to pets and gardening. You know, stuff that you normally do in a home. Sometimes this creates tension. Regulations are often written with safety in mind, and there's a growing recognition that there's more to life than being safe all the time. There's still a lot of work to be done. Nursing homes aren't perfect places. And some people react to that by turning away. After all, you can't change the world. You can only change yourself, right? But no, I want the best for my patients and my grandparents. Are you willing to quit your job to take care of your grandparents full time so that they won't need to move into a nursing home if they get really sick and frail? If not, then we need to improve nursing homes so that they're places that people actually want to be. Help affect the change that you want to see in the world and make nursing homes better places to flourish. So I lay my